Yeah, Baker, now that you've seen the video, how would you evaluate uh, your part in that red carpet celebration, especially the, uh, the barrel roll there at the end? First of all, Jake, it's not a barrel. It's just a well-executed slide uh, into, the, into the red carpet. Um, had my credentials on, was able to take some good photos. Flawless. Um, <laughs> Uh, I know you guys, uh, you're stressing one game at a time, you know, for good reason, but can you feel the excitement around Cleveland? I know it's, you know, kind of a weird time with the the, the pandemic, but can you sense the excitement around the uh, the fan base, you know, with a potential playoff berth on the line for the Browns here down the stretch? And and if so, how can you, you know, how do you sense it? How do you feel it? Uh, no, I mean, we're truly singular focused. Uh, we know where we stand right now. But we know to get where we want to go, it's one game at a time. So excitement or not, uh, it, it wouldn't matter. We have to uh, play the Baltimore Ravens on Monday night, and we have to do our job. Thank you, Jake. Jeff Shadell, you have our next question. All right, we'll go to Daryl Ryder next. We'll come back to Jeff. Hey, Baker, um, after the game in Tennessee, you, you mentioned how fans should reset their expectations because the standards for the Browns have changed. I was wondering if you could just kind of expound upon the standards for the Browns changing and what those standards are now. Um, well, we want to be a winning franchise, a competitive franchise, um, one that, when, you know, when we step out on the field, we know what we're capable of and, and uh, it needs to be a winning culture. I mean, it's all the things we've talked about. Uh, everything needs to be about winning. And then to Monday night's game, um, obviously week one did not go the way you guys wanted it to go. What, what did you learn from that game and just how drastically different of an offense and player you are since then? Um, yeah, we're a completely different team than we were early on, uh, obviously for the better. I think we've learned a lot about ourselves, uh, scheme-wise, uh, personnel-wise. You know what we need to be able to do to have success. And so, uh, yeah, we're we're a very different team, but uh, they are as well. So it's different. Thank you, Daryl. We'll go to Zach Jackson. Big question about uh, the red zone and the end zone with with Jarvis and with Richard. You know, how much is them going exactly where the play says, and how much of that is sometimes improvisation and chemistry with with you getting the ball in the tight spaces to those guys? Um, you know, when you're down in the tight zone, it's about winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups because you see a lot a lot of man coverage. Yeah, teams sometimes do zone it off. Uh, and But we've been having so much success running the ball down there. The teams aren't exactly able to play a lot of zone coverage to us. So we're trusting those guys to win those one-on-ones uh, and just find a way to win. And uh, kudos to those guys for being able to make those plays uh, in critical moments. Thanks. Thank you, Zach. To Anthony Postal next. Hey, Baker. I wanted to ask about the touchdown Sunday to Kendall Lamb. Um, do you get any nerves at all when a trick play is called? And how great did it feel to see him standing there wide open after you faked that handoff to Nick? Uh, no, I mean, you practice those trick plays. You talk about them. Uh, so when you call them, you, you're just ready to uh, you know, execute it. So uh, it's always fun to see a big man touchdown. Uh, just to, you know, see all the linemen get excited for each other and uh, see the celebration. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. Mary Kay Cabot, you're up next. Uh, yeah, Baker, can you just talk about, uh, you know, the Ravens have have been through a lot, but they it seemed like they, uh, you know, Lamar came back in this past game and uh, just the magnitude of this game. I mean, obviously they are coming in here and they, they really need to win this game to, to keep this going and obviously how you guys feel about it. Uh, can you kind of put into words just what you guys are about to face on Monday night and the intense nature of this football game? Uh, it's, you know, I start by, you know, all AFC games are a little bit more important just because of the implication it has on, you know, the end of the season, the postseason. And uh, so this is a very important one. And, you know, teams focus on winning every single uh, playoff game in the second half of the season or home game in the second half of the season. It's just those that you have to have down the stretch. Uh, but, but it's about us doing our job. We know they're a great team. They've had a lot of guys out uh, and injured, but they're getting a lot of guys back. And so uh, we know that just based off our scouting report. But, you know, like we've been saying week in and week out, it's about us coming out and executing our game plan and doing it at a very high level. Thank you. Thanks, Mary Kay. Scott Patrick, we'll go to you. 
Hey, Baker, first of all, what makes that Ravens defense so effective? Um, I mean, they have great personnel for the, you know, the scheme that they're running, uh, the, the plays that Wink calls for them really uh, maximizes their, those guys' potential. Uh, and they, they make a lot of plays. Obviously, you have uh, some ball hawks in the back end and some great young players that are flying around. Obviously, their front uh, is talented. So, they, I mean, they play well as a unit. And so, like, you know, we're expecting them to have guys back. When they have everybody there, they're, they're a great team. And then coming off the performance you and the offense had against the Titans, does it feel like the next step is to have another big game against a top five defense in the league? No, uh, the next step for us is consistency. To, to whoever we're playing, we have to be able to go out and do our job. It doesn't matter who or where or, or when it is. We have to be able to do our job. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Tom Withers is next. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Baker. Hey, Miles was named your guys Walter Payton Award winner today. And you know, it's quite a turnaround from a year ago. And I know you never had any questions about his character or anything like that. But could you just speak to Baker that the kind of a teammate and the person that he is and how deserving he is of this award? Yeah, Miles is uh, obviously very quiet. He's, he's a different type of leader, but he's stepped up in so many ways uh, vocally this year. Um, I, he's got a great heart. And I think that's been something that if people questioned it because of one action last year, then shame on them because you can learn from uh, mistakes as I personally know very well. Um, and, and Miles is a great guy. And so he's been doing things for a lot of people around the world for, for a while. Um, and that just shows his character and his heart. And so uh, he's obviously a great representation for this franchise. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Nate Ulrich is next. Baker, to, to kind of piggyback off that, um, you know, did you ever have any question about how he would be able to come back from it? Because it did seem like such a traumatic event. Um, did no. you ever have any question? No, um, I didn't. I, I don't think anybody in this building did either. Uh, I think if there were questions, it was uh, from the outside looking in, which it doesn't matter when, when we're in this building. And, and you know, I don't know if you had uh, any, you know, specific one-on-one -on -one conversation with him or anything, um, or if it kind of went unsaid, but what kind of support, you know, did you see the organization, you know, give him uh, over this past year? And just how much do you think that that has meant to him? Um, I mean, I, I just think it starts with the teammates and everybody that, you know, continued to keep that line of communication when he wasn't uh, able to be here. And then just throughout the off season, just uh, like I said, him being more verbal uh, and vocal leadership wise, I just them allowing him to do that, I think, uh, I think shows um, that they believe in him and they're willing to trust him. So, I mean, there, there's just a lot of things, but uh, Miles is who he is. And, and so we, we've moved on past that. Uh, and I know he has for a long time now. Thank you, Nate. We have time for one more question. It goes to Jake Trotter. Yeah, Baker, you, you were talking the other day about how uh, you, uh, uh, your friend at OU, uh, your teammate was telling you what it was like, uh, what, what it was like with Browns fans. Um, and you said, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it lived up to that expectation of what he said. What is it like for you as a quarterback to play in a town that cares so much about its football team? Uh, that feels like home to me. Raised in Texas went and played ball in Oklahoma uh, and just moved on to another football town here in Cleveland. So uh, it feels like home to me. That's how it should be. Um, I'm a passionate guy and uh, I try and get everybody else to feel that same passion. And so uh, I don't have to do that as much here. I think um, I, I feed off that and, and vice versa.